because Jesus is concerned about what you're doing before you get to the sweet by and by. And particularly, how are we tearing down and pushing against the works of the enemy? How we've done that, Matthew 25, will have a lot to do with our conversation with Jesus on Judgment Day. And so, and this is where this gets serious, guys. And this is, you know, and this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the divide happens in language like this. And KV is saying this, but he's not the only one who thinks like this. Not by a long shot. Not by a long shot. And so he likens this idea where he's feeling like it's too, uh, as in the way that's going to be sinful. You know, he's basically saying we're going. This is a sin, like how we respond to these issues and how we deal with these issues could be the difference between sinning against God and not sinning against God because we're going to have to answer for it on judgment day. And he mentioned Matthew 25. So I'm going to pull up Matthew 25 real quick. And he doesn't give us the verse that he's referring to, but Matthew 25, and you know, like I like to do here on prescribed truth, if somebody don't want to give me a verse that we can actually look at the context, we're going to have to go through the whole chapter. And that's why <laughs> I just want to break this up <laughs> because we want to give context. And so he mentions Matthew 25 as something relevant to this issue, you know. And so let's uh, let me play that again. Tearing down and pushing against the works of the enemy. How we've done that, Matthew 25. Okay, so the saying is that we're, we're supposed to have been tearing down these works of the enemy. You know, and I do like how he said how, you know, Jesus is concerned with what we do while we're here, not just when we get to the sweet by and by, as he said. I would agree to him in that sense. Like we will have to give an account for everything that we've said, done or thought of when we stand before the Lord. Every idle word that we've spoken, we're going to have to give an answer for, you know. So I, I definitely agree with, agree with that. You know, as believers, this is the case. As a matter of fact, it's everybody, the whole world. We're all going to, have to give an account before the Lord. No matter if you believed in him or not, we're all going to stand and give an account of our life. You know, so I agree with him in that, you know, but he says we're supposed to tear down strongholds and how we've done that. And he in references Matthew 25 is basically going to, you know, say a lot concerning when we stand up for the Lord on judgment day. All right. So, I mean, there's some sense of judgment there and we got to deal with that, you know, because that's a serious, that's a serious claim, serious claim, a serious accusation for those who don't agree with KB and his stance and where he thinks we should go with this information if we even agree with this information you see what I'm saying that's why it's important but I will like to say before I read Matthew 25 is that I believe the Bible is clear as far as how we tear down the works of the enemy you know because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they're mighty hmm. they're mighty the power of God is tearing down strongholds but it's, it, it, is that but is that protest? Is it, I mean, that's is that what that that work is? You know, I don't. Anyway, not necessarily see it that way. But like I said, once again, somebody's gonna say, "Well, Jamal, you basically said we shouldn't be protesting." No, no, I'm not saying that. If there's a march going on for for a right and real reason, that's a that's a that's a true issue to deal with. And yeah, for, for all, by all means, if they're marching. To get abortion um, illegal, make it illegal, you have march for that. <laughs> if there's a protest to make a abortion illegal across the board, protest for that. March and protest for that. You know, peaceful protest, that, be, that is. I still want to be consistent. Peaceful protest, right? But protest nonetheless. All right, so let's read Matthew 25. And I don't have my Bible app pulled up, so I'm, I'm just going to read from my phone. If you have a Bible, you can read along. But we're gonna read this whole chapter. This uh, chapter goes to four, it's forty six verses. Now, somewhere along in this chapter, we're gonna to get to a point where it tells us how we should uh, tear down the works of the enemy because that's what he's referring to. So that's what we're gonna look for. All right. So it says, "Then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were prudent." For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the prudent took oil and flasks along with their lamps. Now, while the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight, there was a shout, behold, the bridegroom come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the prudent, give us some of your oil, 
for our lamps are going out. But the prudent answered, No, there will not there will be there will not be enough for us and you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Later the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Hmm. Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. The one he gave five talents to another, I'm sorry, the one he gave, to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one each according to his own ability, and he went on his journey. Immediately the one who had received the five talents went and traded with them and gained five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more. But he who received the one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You are faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Also, the one who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have gained two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You are faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one also, I mean, I'm sorry. And the one also who had received the one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid and went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave. You knew that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank, and on my arrival I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore, take away the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, more shall be given, and he who have an abundance I'm sorry, and he will have an abundance, but from the one who does not have, even what he does not have shall be taken away. It's interesting. It seems like me there's a disparity here that's encouraged. Um, anyway, let's continue. Throw out the worthless slave into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another. As the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of, the, of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you for the, from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. Now, I believe this is where KB was going. You know, we had to get through the whole chapter. We had to get through that contest, guys. We had to get through that contest to get to this point. But I think this is where he is going with it. All right, because he said, "For how are we to tear down these, tear down the works of the enemy?" Right, and he names Matthew twenty-five. I think this is where he was going. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry? And feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink and when did we see you a see you a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you the king will answer and say to them truly I say to you to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine even the least of them you did it to me I don't care. I'm going to read this again. I don't know if we ever pay attention to context. Let me read this again. The king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. Brothers of mine. That's interesting. Very interesting. 
Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they themselves also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly, I say to you, to the extent that you do that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Now, if you had to endure through all that and that bo that bores you to leave the the um the video, I'm sorry, but that's that scripture for you. We had to read it because KB mentioned it, and we had to give context. But look at the context of this, in verse 45, because he says it's going to bring us to some judgment. You know, we're going to stand for the Lord and give an account for what we do not do, how we not handling these things correctly. So it's a serious charge. All right. So the verse that he's referring to really, I mean, that was the whole context, but he was referring to this part. He says, then he will answer them. Truly, I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Context is key. Context is key, guys. Who are the these that he's speaking about? Now, guys, it's no excuse. There's no excuse. The Bible tells us to do good to all men. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't specify whether they be just brothers in Christ or whatever. It says to all men. All right. We do good to all. Show love to all. That's what we do. All right. So the context of this is, but it's, this context is talking about brothers of mine. If, the, if this is likened to the Lord speaking, who are his brothers? Who, who are his? It's his people. This is the context that we're talking about. It's not just talking about just anyone in the street, because I guarantee you that I, I, I don't think you will meet the least of the poor that's out there. Or the least of the poor that you will ever meet or come across. You see what I'm saying? But it's talking about the brother. This, this is the context. It's someone who's in Christ. All right. And so this goes to the show just like. Scripture, other scripture talks about, and guys, it may show some partiality here, right? Yeah, but it's other parts of scripture talks about how we should do good to all, especially to those of the household of faith. So that's not that's not partiality. We do good to all men, but it's talking about especially to those of the household of faith. There's a special attention given to those of us who are brothers and sisters in Christ versus even our own blood relatives. There's truth in that. All right. So I'm just reading what it says. Okay. Now he he gives. This comparisons with these with these these virgins who have the oil, who some who lack oil, and those who do, and they, those who had the oil make it in. Those who didn't, if not, they're not paying attention. They're not being prudent. You know, they're not using wisdom. You know, they're not taking being good stewards. You have the one with the talents. All three are receiving talents. You know, but someone splurges it or well, doesn't do what they're supposed to do with it, and everybody else did what they're supposed to do with with the talent they was given. You know, yet it like into judgment. You know, then you have the last one being um, those, you know, hey, I you you fed me, you clothed me and all those things. And God is saying, hey, the, 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 to the extent that you've done this, to the extent that you've done this to the to the least of the these brothers of mine, you've done it to me. So this lets me know that, man, like when I do good, when I serve my brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter their high standing or low standing, when I serve my brothers in Christ, I'm serving I'm serving unto the Lord. Is unto him, but when I, when I sit there and turn my heart cold to my brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm turning my heart cold to the Lord. That's that's the context, you know, you know. And so that's not saying you shouldn't do good to the poor, do good for the poor, and that kind of stuff like that, or to people who are in need of help, because the Bible once again says, I'm gonna say again, do good to all men. That's what it says, all right. But there's an extent, you know. Uh, so anyway. I had to give that context. So let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. You know, did you come across that part? And you read it or, you know, does your translation say something different? That was from an NASB. You know, I'm interested to know, you know, how do you guys see that? You know, so let's continue. But he says this is, this is how we view this is going to lead up to judgment. You know, like if we're not doing these things, if we're not taking part in this good fight, as he says, the Lord will look at us one day and cast us off because we're because we're not doing good things to the least of them. You know, therefore we're not, we, we have been serving the Lord. This is a serious charge. 
very serious charge. And I take him seriously when he said it. We'll have a lot to do with our conversation with Jesus on Judgment Day. Almost every single point, every single point in Matthew 25 was about how were these individuals socially taking care of the people around them. Okay, we just read Matthew 25. Every point was not dealing with that. How were they taking care of the people around them? No, the first part was dealing with virgins who were supposed to have oil. And the virgins who had oil refused to give their oil to those who didn't. I mean, they had oil. They all had oil, but they wasted their oil. And they told them, go, go buy your own oil. They didn't give them. They didn't. <laughs> guys, they didn't terribly give them their own oil. You know what I'm saying? No, they said, no, if I, I, I don't have enough for me and you. We trying to get to the bride room, too. You got to go get your own oil. Go buy your own. And those, those women had to go buy their own oil. So, no, that point wasn't dealing with how you help people around you. Matter of fact, it just showed you how, you know, you come up lacking. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be SOS. You know what I'm saying? Or SOL. You know? And so it's like, yo, I mean, that's, that's, that's what it is. So, anyway. And um, then <laughs> the talents, that had nothing to do with I mean that he said every single point. I'm just going with what KB said. He said every single point. Matthew 25. I don't know. Maybe he just talking. Maybe he misspoke. But every single point. Matthew 25 was not dealing with that. Matt, the, the other part we read <laughs> dealing with the talents. That wasn't how you just take care of people around you. One one had the five talents. What he did? He went and traded. He didn't wasn't he wasn't he didn't go and be charitable with the master's money. He went and traded it and built on the master's money. Who who benefited the most from everything that happened? dealing with that portion of scripture the master the slaves didn't get no richer they were slaves you know what I'm saying each one had a talent they did something good with it and he said enter into the joy of your master he didn't say hey you know what you know what since you've done so well with this talent you know what have all these have all these riches no he just said just enter into the joy of your master you know you, you enter into this joy that i have you know you went and got you went and doubled what I gave you. Both of you went and doubled what I gave you. I had gave you five, you came back with ten. I gave you two, you came back with four. That's what I'm talking about. And there's one over here who only had the one who was worried about because I didn't reap. <laughs> I didn't reap where I have sown, and I'm gathering from where I didn't scatter. <laughs> this one, oh no, nah, he's wicked. Lazy. Wicked. You know what I'm saying? And there's a disparity there, guys. I don't know if you noticed it. There's a disparity here. A, a, a true disparity. You got master, slave. The master has wealth. The slaves don't have the wealth. You know, there's a disparity there. And it's a biblical one. Biblical one. Justified one. You know, so this idea that disparities are just like, oh, there shouldn't be any disparities. We all should have the same. Not so. Not so. It wasn't so in the Bible. And you don't see, you don't, you didn't see any apostles rise up and say, oh, you masters who got slaves. And though or indentured servants, as you some of you want to claim, even if you want to have that argument, that all oh, your masters who got slaves and servants, this isn't right. Y'all, they should all y'all should all be making the same and having the same opportunities to get this wealth, and they can't get that opportunity if they're your servants. So you should let them go. No, I didn't ever see Paul make that argument. Never seen Peter make that argument. Don't see any writings in church history in general that did that argument, period. Don't see that was a fight that I don't see that would be in a good fight back then. You know, those disparities, you know. So anyway, I mean, guys, no, that point wasn't dealing with how you should help those around you. Now, the last portion that we did read has something to do with serving other people. But serving who? Serving who? You know, it's just in the context of what we read, you know. And so I know some of you guys who are on the, on the social side would say, well, see, the Bible says we're supposed to do this and do that. No, but let's look at this verse. He said that every point points to how we should do for other people. Well, in that portion of scripture, in that last portion of scripture, dealing with, you know, when you've done things, done this stuff for the least of these brothers of mine, you've done one to me. Well, we got to ask the question, who are the brothers of the master? Who are the, who are the brothers of the master? That's an affectionate term. Who are they? Who is, who is Jesus speaking about? There's a reason why he said it. And it makes sense because doesn't that go along with John? First John, first John says, how can you, how can you say you love Christ, but then hate your brother? I mean, that's what, that's what John says. I mean, I, I, I see some connection there in scripture. You know, if you say you love Christ yet, 
hate your hate your hate your brother, you're not truly a follower of Christ. And then Jesus say also that they will know those. I mean, the world will know who are mine by the love that you show one to another. He didn't say they'll know who are mine based on the love that you show to the world. No, he said you would. They would know. They would know who are mine by the love that you show one to another. All right. There's reasons to that, and see, there's connections. So that's what I'm saying. When you have a faulty premise, once again, a faulty premise, everything else that flows after that is crap. It's crap. The use of this verse taken wildly out of context. Wildly out of context. And so now he got a, he had a bad premise, and he's stacking on that bad premise with bad arguments. And then saying that we're going to be judged, that God is going to judge us for not doing how he thinks that scripture talks about. You know, and that's that's serious. You know, that's very serious.